hi friends now we will discuss on the topic cleaner liquid fuel production from petroleum crude in the previous class we have discussed how to produce liquid fuel from petroleum crude and now we will see how the liquid fuels can be produced more cleaner actually we have come to know that the petroleum crude contains different types of impurities like say uh, salt content, sulphur, nitrogen, oxygen etcetera. So, these impurities can create some problem and during refining process these can also be transferred to the liquid fuels and when the liquid fuels will be used as a transport fuel at that time pollutions will come. So, we need some cleaning options the some methods to remove those pollutants from the liquid fuels. Secondly, we have come to know that the residual part particularly the vacuum residue contains high asphaltene, high sulphur, high metals etcetera and this part is of less interest to the refiners and poorly managed and creates lot of environmental problems. So, upgradation of this vacuum residue is required and that can give us a cleaner route or cleaner option to the overall refining process and it will also help to increase the economy of the refining process. Thirdly, we have come to know that gradually the petroleum crude quality is decreasing, its sulphur content is increasing, viscosity increasing and degree API is reducing. So, the processing of this heavy crude through the conventional technology is not that effective may not be that effective. So, we need some alternative technology to use this feedstock heavy feedstocks for its refining. So, these are the topics or sub topic we can say we are going to discuss in this module and uh, in this class we will discuss basically on the impurities removal and the contents are impurities and need of their removal. Then process for impurities removal like sulphur compounds removal and then sulphur nitrogen and metal removal. So, sulphur can be removed by sweetening process and all sulphur nitrogen and metal can be removed by hydro treatment and we will make some more discussion on this topic. So, as you have discussed that crude oil contains different types of impurities salt and sulphur, nitrogen, oxygen etcetera and desalting process is used to remove the salt from the crude oil, but that uh, salt which is dissolved in the emulsified water or in the crystalline form. And basically we have seen there sodium, calcium, magnesium chlorides are removed mostly apart from these we also have some other other metals. So, we will discuss how to remove those and sulphur can also be present in this case as inorganic sulphur and organic sulphur. So, we will discuss how the sulphurs can be removed. So, this uh, sulphur removal process is called sweetening process sweetening of the liquid fuel and uh, it is most important for the refiners to improve the quality of the liquid products and uh, this is done by alkyl extractions and hydro treatment. The impurities removal are very important because it, uh, it helps to improve the quality of the, of the product. Now, we will see in which form sulphur is present in crude oil. So, as it can be in inorganic form or may be in organic form. So, organic form basic compound is thiols R S H. So, alcohols are O H. So, this O is replaced by sulphur then it is called thiols and marcaptans. So, this is the major compounds present in petroleum crude and then sulphides may be R S R. So, this two alkyl groups with sulphur that can also be available or uh, disulphides R S S R and maybe cyclic sulphides as shown here and then thiophene and benzothiophene some benzene ring can also be available with the thiophene 
and then dibenzothiophene this is the structure and naphthanobenzothiophene. So, these are the st molecular structure of these compounds which are present normally in uh, petroleum crude and if we think about the nitrogenous compound. So, those are some non basic type and some basic type. So, non basic are pyrrole this is C 4 H 5 N and this is a structure and indole C 8 H 7 N this is a structure carbazole and benzo carbazole then it may have basic type that is pyridine quinoline and then indoline and benzo quinolone. So, benzo quinolone. So, these are some compounds. Now, we will see how these compounds can be removed. We will discuss first how the sulphur can be removed and for the removal of sulphur compounds number of methods have been reported and used. So, those are caustic wash, then doctor treatment, then copper sweetening and Merox process the which was the, the advanced one. So, we will discuss about all these processes. So, if we want to remove the sulphur and if it is present is sulphide, so sulphide is acidic in nature. So, if we use uh, alkali solution, so that sulphides or H2S will be dissolved in this NOH solution. And uh, uh, if we use this alkali solution that is caustic lye, so that caustic lye and uh, crude oil or any other liquid oil will be mixing well and then there will be two layer one, one aqueous layer and another is your organic layer that is oil layer. So, that oil all the impurities like sulphur, mercaptans and sulphides will come to the lye solution and the reactions is represented here RSH plus NaOH that will give us NaSR plus H2O. So, this is the conversion which takes place during this process and the mercaptans are uh, are made free from the sulphur. So, sulphur removal takes place like this way and then it will come to liquid phase and that sulphur recovery and, and lye recovery can take place. Now, uh, this process we use the lye solution of lower concentration not high sodium hydroxide concentration where it is 5 to 20 percent weight by weight are used at 20 to 45 degree centigrade and 5 to 40 psi pressure. If we use the high concentration of NOH and high temperature then it will have some drawback that uh, uh, it may produce some color body as well as the product may lose the stability. That is why this condition is maintained and when the lye solution we are using that it is not possible that uh, all the lye or any solution is consumed by sulphides. So, if it is say, around 65 percent sodium hydroxide is uh, consumed by the sulphides then we call it as a spent lye solution. This spent lye solution can be used further for the um, removal of hydrogen sulphide, light mercaptans, organic acids or mineral acids. A lye solution that is spent as far as hydrogen sulphide is concerned may still be used to remove mineral or organic acids from petroleum products. Now, we will see what is the doctor treatment. So, doctor treatment in this process mercaptan is removed by the use of sodium plumbite and elemental sulphur. So, the mechanism is like this, this mercaptan will react with sodium plumbite and this PBSR 2 for will form and then sodium hydroxide will be formed. And this PBSR 2 which is produced here that will react with sulphur. So, it is react with sulphur and then it will give us RSSR plus RSXR X is any number say 2, 3, 4, 5 like this. So, plus 2 PBS and then PBSR 2 also can be oxidized to some extent to produce RSSR plus PBO. So, these are the chemical reactions which takes place for the conversion of mercaptan to these products. Now, this process has this process have some uh, disadvantages like say we are using excess sulphur. So, if we can make some a mistake 
and more sulfur is added then that sulfur will produce more uh, polysulfides which is not desirable in terms of corrosive nature of the fuel. So, it may fail the copper strip corrosion test and when more sulfur is used then the, then that PBSR 2 will be more and that can also be converted to PBO. So, that PBO conversion can be more and more PBO it will create uh, some other problem that we will call water tolerance test. So, that water tolerance will be reduced. So, these are the two major disadvantage of doctor process. Then we will see copper sweetening process. Another process which was used to remove the mercaptans was the use of copper chloride. So, if we use copper chloride, so mercaptan will react with this copper chloride. So, cupric chloride, so CUSR plus HCl plus RSSR, this is the reaction. And then if we have Q plus chloride, then the reaction will be this. So, CUSR which is produced here, it can again react with CuCl2 and give us RSSR plus 4 CuCl and then CuSR can also be oxidized to CuO and RSSR. So, this process also have some drawback. So, what will happen in this case? This Q plus marcaptide that is oil soluble Q plus marcaptide remains in treated oil and then copper chloride reacts with naphthenic acid phenols and other polar compounds to form oil soluble copper compounds. The oil soluble cuprous mercaptide oxidation to copper this reaction will make this product to fail the water tolerance test. It will, it will prevent the product to pass the water tolerance test. Then we are coming to Merox process. So, Merox process is the advanced one. So, it uh, replaces the previous processes and uh, in this case we use some catalyst and this process is developed by UOP in the year 1958 and it uh, completely replaced the older processes and uh, it is very simple with respect to others and uh, it can be performed by two ways. One is light molecular weight uh, marcaptans from the LPG and light straight run naphtha, those can be separated by using some alkali solution, then that can be catalytically oxidized. So, we have say LPG or straight run naphtha. naphtha. So, this will be reacting with some alkali solution and it will give us the, the mercaptans will come here in the solution alkali solution and then this solution will go for catalytic oxidation. oxidation. So, this is the mechanism through which we can do or directly we can also handle high molecular weight mercaptans present in heavy naphtha, FCC gasoline, ATF kerosene etcetera into disulfide. So, this is the two way of processes for two different type of feedstock and the basic reactions are here RSH plus NaOH. So, oil phase plus aqueous phase it is giving us NaSR plus H2O and then NaSR produced here that will be oxidized and then 2H2O NaOH plus RSSR. Again well phase we are getting insoluble in caustic. So, this is insoluble in caustic and we will be getting it and separate it. So, RSH plus O2 2 RSSR plus 2H2O. So, these are the reactions which take place in this uh, Medox process for mercaptan removal. Now, this reaction 1 this is very mostly applicable for low molecular weight mercaptans and at low temperature and high caustic concentration. Now, we will see how the Merox process work. So, this uh, 
we are putting here feed then we need one caustic pre wash. So, then after washing some mercaptan is going out. So, rest is coming here and here extractor we are giving sufficient time this place basically inorganic sulphides are removed and then it is coming the mercaptan removal here in this extractor and then the mercaptan rich alkali solution is coming here and is going to second step for air addition and this is our oxidizer catalyst are used then disulphide forms here. So, disulphide is coming and here it is separated. So, disulphide separation spent air is going out and then disulphide we are having a two phase disulphide phase oil phase and here aqueous phase aqueous phase your alkali phase and oil phase. So, this is insoluble in uh, water so or alkali solution. So, we are getting the disulphide oil and the aqueous layer containing alkali it is recycled back to this column extractor for further extraction and which goes here that is coming to caustic settler and then sand filter and then treated product. Basically, if it is a uh, LPG stream if feed is the LPG stream then that will be gas will come here and will we will pass it through the sand filter. So, other other impurities if something here so that will be removed and gas will go here. So, this is the flow sheet uh, for the Merox process with reference to LPG. Then in this process we see one is your caustic pre wash another is your oxidizer these two very important uh, steps apart from this extractor. So, what we do in pre wash our objective is to uh, remove the inorganic sulphides just I have mentioned. So, H 2 S plus N H it will form N 2 S plus 2 H 2 O and N 2 S plus H 2 S 2 N A S H. So, this type of reaction takes place in the caustic pre wash and uh, uh, in the oxidizer which is happening N A 2 S which is available in the caustic solution then it will come uh, in the oxidizer it will react with oxygen and then Na2H2O3 will form and this will be new age. So, this regenerated or this alkali solution again we are getting. So, that is recycled and NaSH will react with 2O2 and Na2H2O3 plus H2O and again Na2S plus 2O2 plus Na uh, that, that gives us Na2SO4. So, these are the reactions which take place in oxidizer. Now, in this oxidizer we supply here. So, what will be the air requirement? Obviously, we have to provide excess air uh, than the stoichiometric requirement and typical value is given here 0 0.84 normal meter cube per kg of RSH sulphur. This is the stoichiometric requirement and so excess air 100 to 200 percent is provided. If we increase the air then it causes rapid and complete caustic regeneration. But if the air supply is very high then some disadvantage we may get that is dissolved oxygen will be more and that can cause sweetening in extractor because we are we are we are recycling this in this and spent air will have higher oxygen leading to increased corrosion and hazards. So, that is the one important drawback if we use very high oxygen here or air here and settling of catalyst may also take place. Now, how can you quantify the air requirement? There are some formula it is provided here in case of LPG. So, air requirement is 1.5 into 0 0.84 into F into SG into RSH by 1000. So, air injection rate is normal meter cube per hour, F is the LPG flow rate meter cube per hour and SG is specific gravity of LPG at 15.5 degree centigrade and RSH is the Markapton sulphur in ppm weight basis. So, now this oxidizer or oxidation unit of Merox process is a catalytic process and UOP have developed two catalyst one is Merox WS and another is Merox FB. So, Merox WS is a totally water soluble and specially formulated catalyst for use in extractive or liquid liquid sweetening. So, it is a liquid 
uh, process liquid solution in this form the catalyst is available and specific gravity 1.16 plus minus 0 0.01 and freezing point 0 degree centigrade active ingredient is your 1 kg per gallon. Now, for Merox FB catalyst this is developed for in situ impregnation of the fixed bed sweetening version of the UP Merox process. So, some fixed bed is used in this case and uh, Merox catalyst is, uh, is impregnated on it, it is a, as water slurry ready for use in the fixed bed Merox reactor impregnation step. So, this is two type of catalyst they have developed on application point of view and here it is also liquid dispersion specific gravity 1.15 plus minus 0 0.01 and freezing point 0 degree centigrade and active ingredient 2.5 kg per 2.5 gallon. Now, examples of applications of the Merox process. So, different type of feedstock we can use different types of feedstock can be cleaned through this process and uh, these are the applicable treatment. So, how uh, what the people have done for different type of feedstock, so what type of options of the milk process have been implemented is provided here. So, if it is L LPG mostly extraction based process and then light straight run naphtha extraction and liquid liquid sweetening, bis breaking bis breaker gasoline fixed bed sweetening and FCC gasoline fixed bed and then full boiling range straight run naphtha liquid liquid sweetening fixed weight sweetening and both can be used and then kerosene kerosene aviation turbine fuel by getting fixed weight sweetening. So, these are the preferred configurations of Merox process for different type of feedstock. Now, we will discuss the hydro treatment the how the hydrogen is used to remove the impurities. So, in terms of hydro treatment we can term it as hydro processing. So, this hydro processing is thermal conversion process in which hydrogen is used to accomplish the objectives of the refiner. So, this hydro processing can be of two types one is hydro treating and another hydro cracking. So, hydro, hydro treating means we provide hydrogen under such conditions uh, for a certain duration that only uh, sulfur and uh, nitrogen those compounds will be separated from this. So, a pro this is the process in which hydrogen is used to convert heteroatom constituents into their heteroatom hydrogen analogs and hydrocarbons. So, this is R S R 1 plus H 2. So, R H R 1 H plus H 2 S. So, that this H S is removed by hydrogen to produce H 2 S. So, only sulfur is removed there is no cracking or molecular change in this compound and hydro cracking is a thermal decomposition is extensive and hydrogen assist in the removal of the heteroatoms as well as mitigating the coke formation which normally accompanies thermal cracking of high molecular weight polar constituents. So, if we go for thermal cracking then what happens there is a coke formations on the catalyst, but if we use hydro, hydro cracking. So, that coke formation will be reduced because those will be converted by this addition of hydrogen. So, coke will not be deposited. So, that is called it is hydro cracking. So, hydro cracking will, will, will uh, reduce will break the bigger molecules and it will convert it into lower hydrocarbons rather than deposition of coke unlike thermal thermal cracking process. So, major differences between hydro treating and hydro cracking are the time at which the feedstock remains at reaction temperature and the extent of decompositions of non hetero constituent and products. How long we are providing uh, this feedstock in contact with hydrogen and what is the condition of the reactor. So, those will differentiate this low less ok. So, now we will see the comparison of these the processes and uh, before that we will see the reactions mechanism 
which take place during hydro treatment or hydro processing. So, we sulfur compound when hydrogen is added RSH is converted to RH plus H 2 S and then R S R plus 2 S 2 2 R H plus H 2 S R S S R plus 3 S 2 2 R H plus 2 S 2 and H 2 S it combusted to CO 2 and SO 2. So, these are the reactions which take place during the hydro processing or hydro treatment of the of the feedstock. And then for nitrogen removal when we add hydrogen the nitrogen is also removed and this is the mechanism we have one um, hydrogen containing compound. So, that is we are using some catalyst and H 2 this catalyst is basically so acid base pair plus H 2 that converts this one to this moiety and there are two, re two, two reaction steps two roots that is one and another is two. So, this intermediate products forms in this root and that is converted to this one and again finally, converted to this product and we get ultimately this one typical presentation of this phenomena. Another root we get this intermediate product. So, here it is coming to this one almost similar. So, substitution one and two reactions and then it is converting to this one. So, ultimately this way nitrogen is removed from the compound. Now, substitution reaction leading to denitrogenation this was our compound. So, H 2 S is present. So, this N will be replaced by S that can also be possible by the ammonia release. So, these are different type of reactions which may take place during denitrification process denitrogenation process and here the catalyst which are used those catalysts are basically uh, tungsten and molybdenum sulphides on alumina supported on alumina and their properties are modified by adding some cobalt and nickel. So, those are because of hydrogenation promoters so cobalt and nickel. So, cobalt molybdenum and nickel molybdenum two active ingredients we are getting for the nitrogen uh, sulfur and nitrogen removal. So, out of these two this one CO molybdenum is less active than nickel molybdenum for nitrogen removal because uh, nickel molybdenum catalyst have higher hydrogenation activity than cobalt molybdenum catalyst. Now, we will see the metal removal how the metal can be removed from the uh, product or the feedstock. So, as you have seen that in, in the crude oil different types of metals are available some metals are available in water in, in emulsified water the calcium, magnesium, sodium etcetera and some metals are also there that is vanadium, nickel, tin, lead, cobalt, titanium, gold etcetera those are in less amount and typically vanadium and nickel those are mostly available in crude and the concentrations are vanadium varies from 0 0.1 to as high as 1200 ppm and nickel commonly varies from trace to 150 ppm. So, nickel and vanadium these are two major metals uh, are present in the petroleum crude and which, which needs removal from it to get high quality liquid product. In which form this vanadium and nickel exist there are two thoughts one is told that that is your porphyrinic and another is your non porphyrinic. So, porphyrinic state or non porphyrinic state in which form they will are existing. So, most of the literature prefers the porphyrinic state and uh, more information is available on this other one is not widely uh, reported and this may be the molecular weight of this type of compounds 420 to 520 and molecular formula is C 27 N 4 to C 33 N 4. So, this is the representation of this porphyrinic metallic compounds. So, we have to remove this metal. So, for the removal of this metal different types of methods are applied physical and chemical methods. So, physical methods basically uh, solvent extraction. So, we add some solvent. So, lighter parts from the 
from the vacuum residue it comes to the solvent and heavy asphalt in etc where the porphyrinic compounds those go at the bottom. So, it is separated from the from the oil. So, that way it, it can be done or thermal process also used that is the vis breaking etc. And uh, the chemical concept of demetallization is selective, selective, uh, selectively remove the metal from the organic moiety with minimal conversion of the remaining petroleum. The demetallization of metalloporphyrins by acid a reversible reaction. So, this is the reaction it is shown that uh, P m plus H x porphyrinic metal and acid H x. So, that H may react with metal chloride we can get and that will be the compound porphyrinic compound without metals. So, that way the addition of acid can convert the metal into their salt respective salt. So, then catalytic hydroprocessing these are the chemical and physical methods apart from this we can go for hydroprocessing steps using some catalyst in that way also these metals can be removed along with nitrogen, sulphur and oxygen. So, these are the different routes through which the metals sulphur and nitrogen are removed from the liquid oil to make it more cleaner transport fuel. So, thank you very much for your patience.